we're here at the Hope Village as we highlight both their work and then announce a gift of electric powered lawn maintenance equipment from the city's Air Pollution Control Board. A win-win for everybody. They're a really deserving recipient of this gift here today. When you think about the transformation that has taken place in this site in the past six months or so from the city purchasing this location for a really needed element of our challenging our houselessness population here in Louisville to transforming the site the way that you see it right now and the results we're getting uh, in Hope Village and Hope Bus and Reverend Bussey and Angel and the whole team stepping up to address this big community need uh, it has really worked out in a super fantastic way. Uh, Hope Village has transformed the lives now of dozens and dozens of individuals. A little bit about sustainability because it's a big issue for our world and for our city and for the country. Uh, you see the climate crises that are taking place everywhere. So sustainability has been at the forefront of my administration as one of our key priorities since I took office in 2011. Recently we've had a couple announcements that have set some aggressive goals for us that we've been pursuing now here for the past decade. In 2020, the council and I worked to pass an ordinance committing to a 100% clean energy for Louisville Metro operations by 2035, and then community-wide clean energy by 2040. When you think about the contributors to uh, greenhouse gas emissions, there's a lot of contributors, but the use of electric-powered vehicles and other equipment is a significant part of this transition away to decreasing greenhouse gas emissions because 29 percent of the nation's carbon footprint comes from transportation sources and so that's why earlier this or, or that's why last year i signed an executive order ordering metro agencies and departments to prioritize the purchase of electric and hybrid vehicles green equipment and necessary infrastructure to support Louisville Metro's municipal fleet transition to electric. We can do that now because more and more electric vehicles are available to us. So here we are today because yes, lawn equipment plays into this issue. In the United States, and most people would not guess this, gas mowers account for 5% of the nation's air pollution. In Louisville alone, that accounts for 20 and a half million pounds of air pollution produced each and every year. So anything we can do to reduce that, we're gonna do that. Our Air Pollution Control Board is helping us lead the way. And we've got a great team at APCD. Last October, I joined the board and other city leaders to install an electrical vehicle charging station at Jefferson Memorial Forest. And along with today's gift, these investments make lower emitting equipment more accessible to all Louisville residents. This is a very critical national and global time uh, for the environment. We continue to see advances and unprecedented investments in clean energy and electric technology to help us move out of what we're seeing with all these climate changes all around the world. So when I say it's a critical time, it's always a critical time, but when there's a critical legislation that is before the country as there is right now with the Inflation Reduction Act, that the Senate, I hope, will pass, and then the House, and then President Biden will sign into law. This is the most consequential environmental legislation that our country has ever seen, and will allow our country to meet our commitments to the rest of the world in terms of the United States leading envir with environmental protection. So it looks like we're in good shape, but I would encourage people to contact their U.S. Senators and say they support the Inflation Reduction Bill which includes, as I said, many environmental advances as well. So we've got to do this to take more choices that help our environment and our communities. So a big, big partner on this and leader is the Air Pollution Control District. Uh, they do an amazing job. The quality of Louisville's air exceeds that of the national standard that is required. And that would, that's because a lot of people are contributing, but APCD, Rachel Hamilton and her team are leading the charge for that. So Carl Hilton is going to speak. Carl's the chair of the Air Pollution Control Board. Thank you, uh, Mayor Fisher, for being here. And also like to uh, thank uh, Hope Village for having us here uh, this afternoon or this morning. First, I'd like to, um, on behalf of the uh, Louisville Metro Air Pollution Control Board, um, 
We'd like to thank the uh, Hope Village uh, for this work that they've done on this project. Um, this, this will set a, uh, an example that will be an inspiration for everyone that you can, you can use these uh, electric uh, mowers, uh, weeders, and everything uh, uh, to cut your grass. And they've made a big improvement in these uh, uh, equipment. Uh, like uh, Mary Fisher mentioned, there's over 71,000 acres of uh, grass that's being cut in Louisville. That's a lot of grass to cut. That's a lot of grass. So I think in, is, uh, with, with all the technology we have around the batteries for these uh, pieces of equipment, I think it's essential that people try to uh, look and see if, if this was, uh, would be for them because we want Louisville to be a very clean, our quality uh, community for everyone. Um, this opportunity uh, for the uh, for this uh, uh, group is that we like to really uh, support organizations that have the uh, environmental incentive uh, to do uh, some uh, excellent work around uh, air pollution uh, control, our quality work. Um, the transition to cleaner uh, sources of energy, uh, like electrical vehicles, um, will also really uh, make a big difference. And most of you probably you have seen in the news something that's going on with our climate. We have an, uh, intense rainstorms, we have uh, forest fires in the west, so something is going on. And so I think it's, it's, it's time for us to wake up and, and look at some alternatives of, of, of using these gas mowers and weeders. Also, Louisville is, is a leader uh, in finding um, sustainable uh, energy and goals for, for this particular project. Um, this project will make a difference uh, for the folks here in, in Hope Village. And by the way, uh, Hope Village is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So I'm sure people can donate uh, to this cause. And what I'm going to do is probably uh, tell some of our friends and, and, uh, and some of my organizations that they will accept donations uh, uh, for this uh, particular work. Any city's going to have a lot of challenges, and you see that all over the world. So what you need is people coming together to identify them and then work together to make the city a better place. And that's when you know you're really in the game. And that's what Hope Village really represents to me and the whole Hope Bus uh, founded by Reverend Stachel Bussey uh, several years ago has been helping our community in many different ways and when we were put the request for proposals out on who would operate the Hope uh, what, what became known as the Hope Village when I saw that Reverend Bussey and her team uh, were competing for that um, I, I said Reverend you, you got enough capacity to do all this and she said, don't worry, we'll put the team together to make this happen. So she's a great entrepreneur as well. Also has her uh, PhD in divinity. And so when we talk about Stachel Bussey, we should always call her Reverend Stachel Bussey, one of Louisville's great citizens. Reverend Bussey. Thanks so much, Mayor Fisher. Um, again, he said all, he always takes it all at the beginning and then wants everybody to finish it after him. But he said everything needed to be said. I think it's um, especially important to me. At 12 years old, I had a job uh, and my godfather, he's probably watching right now, and I cut about five yards every week and that was my allowance. Um, and so we had the opportunity to meet with the APCD board uh, to really not just bring equipment here, but also to give our residents responsibilities when they come here, this is not where they just, I see all the, like, the comments when they look like, under WDRB and W. They, like, just, they just making them lazy and they just enable them. But that's not what we do here at the whole village. Uh, behind me, there's a, there's a chore sign-up sign sheet where you, you, you take a chore, you take a list, um, and, you, and you take a job. And, and we have, and our residents, they are the ones who maintain the ground along with our project assistants. But they do an incredible job and they take pride in it. Um, and also... Um, it's just an incredible, you know, way to teach people responsibility when they do get into housing. And by the way, I think we are at 10 people in three months who have been housing. So I think that is something to absolutely celebrate. Right. 
and we want them to actually stay in housing. And sometimes we understand when you come from the streets and then you go to housing, you don't always have the tools uh, you need to actually stay in the housing. So here we give them every resource we can. It is an incredible team. And I think a name you don't hear enough is uh, Angel L. Todd, who was the site director here and the director of operations for the whole bus. And I know I get to be the energetic face, but she is absolutely the brains behind the operations. I just say we should do it, and then she makes it all happen. So I think you guys should absolutely hear from her today. Um, and there's a, probably a couple residents who I'm sure will watch this later and be like, I saw my stuff on TV, and we got to make sure we put it back where it goes. <laughs> Uh, so that they'll make sure they can, they can, they can get their task completed. But I want to introduce Angela L. Todd, who's in, done an incredible job running the whole village. Her and Tiny have just came and just exceeded the expectations. So I want to give her a little bit, a chance to say something. Uh, again, when we created this, we did not want it just to be a place where we enabled you, but where we gave you some responsibility and where you came and you actually learned what it meant to be in community and eventually learn how to be on your own. So people, site director and the director of operations for the whole bus, Site director of the whole village, Angel L. Ty. She always does this to me. Hey, you guys. Um, yeah, I, I thought I had what I was going to say, but it's losing me. Um, I am a story person, so I will say this. Um, since we've had the Hope Village um, open, what I've enjoyed is just meeting and getting to know all of our individuals who come in and live with us. Um, we have people who come from all walks of life. Um, and if you look at them, you might not think so, but we have folks who have culinary degrees. We have folks who, you know, are mathematicians and like can do numbers like I can't even think of. Um, we have people who just want to be safe and want to be cared for, and that's what we do here. Um, one of the things that I love is that, yes, like Seychelles said, we have a chore list, we have tasks, but it's very seldom that we have to remind people to do those things because they find value in their home. And so even with this lawn care equipment, they have been biting at the bits to get their hands on it to go and take care of the space where they live. And that's as simple as, I just need to get the weeds from around my shelter. Um, I'll do the big yard, you know, and to see them take take such pride in that. Even the ones who really don't know what they're doing, like me, um, and was threatened, no, not threatened, but you know, encouraged, make sure you do it right so we don't break it. But the fact that they want to learn, um, and that can be a total coping skill for some people. I don't know how many people really do lawn care, but that's what I hear, and that's what we're giving them, is opportunities to learn different skills. Um, and to just figure out who they are in this new world of being stable in this place and then what it looks like to go somewhere else. And so that's where I hang my head is just all the interactions that I continuously get to have with them and the experiences that we get to give them. So when the rain stops, because we live in Louisville, <laughs> we hope that we will open up all of these boxes and we will have you know a cutting party around here and the grounds will just be amazing because the residents um, care enough about it to do it. So thank you guys. We here at the whole village, um, I don't really believe in like one person being in leadership. So we do something what we call a collective leadership. If I was making all the decisions, the whole village probably would have been doomed the, the day it was uh, open. Um, but I wanted to introduce to you the collective leadership who make a lot of decisions for what goes on. But there's also an advisory council who's not here today um, over the whole village who includes a lot of local community people. Uh, and they do an incredible job. It's about 10 of them coming in and help setting the precedent for the whole village. But some of the crew that I have here today, of course, you met Angel Taj, who is a site director and the director of operations for the whole bus. And I have the incredible Tiny Heron, who um, is just who's done work in the city of Louisville. And I was, it was a dream when she got in my inbox and said, I think I want to come and work for the whole village. I was like, I think you do too. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yes, uh, Tiny, Tiny and her group, uh, all of the grassroots group, but her group for the Forgot Louisville have been on the streets and so many other groups, grassroots groups, who helped make the whole village work. Um, and Tiny is just, I'm just glad she's here. She's done this work all, and y'all know her name. She's done all this outreach work in Louisville. So I'm glad she's here at the whole village. She is our care coordinator. Tiny ca coordinates all of the care that our residents get. And then she also takes case, and she handles all of our ca care managers and case managers. And, uh, and Tiana went somewhere else because she went to walk the dog because that's what our case managers do around here. <laughs> uh, she went to walk one of our residents' dogs. We have uh, Nanny Crony here who is a program lead for the Hope Bus, but here at the Hope Village, she manages all of the interns. And by the way, I think something is incredibly cool. When I talk about community, I don't just say it, like I actually mean it. And so I think by September, we will have an intern from every local college in the city of Louisville. 
Right, that's something to celebrate. All right, so Nanny manages all of our interns. She has an MSW, does all this incredible work, and you know, it was a social worker in the city of Louisville, so I appreciate that. And one person who you did not see represented here is Leanne. I think she has one of the hardest jobs. She manages all of the project assistants and the people who do the day the day to day work with alongside of our residents. So um, that's your, that is your core leadership. It is five of us making it all happen around here. And so I want you to give that group a hand because first of all, they got to work with me. <laughs> and then second of all, they have done an incredible job building out uh, the whole village and bringing this vision to life. So we should really just thank them. Yeah, and so we have a lot of different, again, you can go to our like website and see all the grassroots organizations, but another thing I wanna highlight is the way that this runs, is like volunteer grassroots organizations. How many volunteer hours do we have? We're about 220 hours, 220 hours of volunteers who literally give that amount of time to the whole bus. There are some organizations who are consistently here, and one of those organizations is Summer Dickerson and Women of the Well, who absolutely take, take a lead role here. There are some other organizations, uh, Jacob's Ladder, I'm, I might not call everybody's name, but Daryl and uh, Fern Creek Street Reach, they do an incredible job. My dog eats first, supplies all of our pets with everything they need. Uh, it's, an it's another Louisville organization, Louisville Groves, who donated their trailer to us uh, to make sure that we have storage and all of these, uh, and all of the park table, the park benches that you see, they donated that to us. So this city really has come together and set the precedent for what it really looks like when we do community together. And so I think it's not just the Hope Village, but I think you gotta give the entire city of Louisville a hand right now because this is what we do and this is who we can be when we are a community who shows up for each other. Every single Thursday, people are dropping off everything. Pots and pans, I don't know where they think we're gonna cook it at. But people drop off everything, just the ordinary people who come by every day to make sure that the work is done. So thank you so much to City of Louisville. We wanna <laughs> applaud you. Yeah. We do want to note too, so the funds for the Hope Bus came from the American Rescue Plan. So when we think about the federal funds and how they came together, uh, this was one of the first projects we were able to get underway. Uh, we set up a separate little division uh, within Metro that's led by Margaret Handmaker. Alicia, Ari Alicia Ariadi uh, has been the project manager for getting the Hope Village up and running from just a newly purchased piece of property to now where we're housing some 50, 45, 50 or so residents here uh, and with all the results that are coming from that. So a lot, a lot of work went into to do that. Alicia, I want to recognize you for being a great project manager with a great big heart as well. Let's give it up for her. Thank you. All right, so thanks everybody for coming out here today where we see an environmental win for the community and continuing assistance and improvements going into our houselessness uh, challenges as well. So with that, we're happy to take any questions. Good morning, Mayor. Um, I know this is a great gift from this department. Are other departments in the city stepping up and doing the same type of uh, in-kind gifts and support for the whole village? Well, mainly through just services that we've done. So when Hope Village needs something, they'll communicate with Alicia or RCS, our resource and community services team and say, here's what the current bottleneck is, here's what we need to get done. It could be in the case of setting this up, you know, like making sure electricity's here, codes and regulations are here. How are we doing in terms of bringing this building over here will be bridge housing for us probably in the next year and a half, two years or so. So there's a lot that goes into this campus right here. So all the metro government's behind them. Yeah, ice is good. Calling on all ice machine manufacturers out there. We need your help here at Hope Village. And uh, let's run that as a little below your screen there on the TV stations, if you would. And where, what's the, for the 501c3, if people want to donate to the Hope Bus, dot com? Hope Bus, H-O-P-E-B-U-S-S dot org. It's a good investment. It's a great investment. Anything else? All right, well, thank you all so much for coming out today.